Introduction to the Delta Y Transformer Connection, Part 5. In Part 5, we're going to perform phasor analysis on the Delta Y Transformer Connection and look at how the square root of 3 and the 30 degrees phase shift comes into play. Okay, so this is what we illustrated in Part 4. We did a nodal analysis on node A1, node B1, and node C1 and looked at the relationship between line currents and phase currents. And these are the equations that we came up with. In these equations, we said that the line current A plus the phase current C equals phase current A, right? Now we're going to evaluate this particular equation and look from a phasor diagram's perspective. Okay, let's rewrite these equations into something that makes a little more sense. Okay, so all we're going to do is take this phase current and move it on the other side of the equation. Okay, so let me zoom in here. Okay, so we're going to rewrite this equation and solve for the line current A. So line current A equals phase current A minus phase current C. Similarly, line current B equals phase current B minus phase current A. And line current C equals phase current C minus phase current B. Okay, so now that we've written our equations like this, let's uh, define our phase values. So our phase values are the currents that are flowing through our winding. So we're going to define what our phase A current is going to look like. We're going to define phase B current and phase C current. So we're going to define these currents and create a balanced system. So let's say that phase current A on the primary side equals 1000 amps at 0 degrees. And phase current B equals, equals 1000 amps at 240 degrees. And lastly, phase current C equals 1000 amps at 120 degrees. Okay, so now we're going to draw these phasers, all right? Remember, these phasers are just the currents that are flowing through the primary windings. Keep in mind the big picture of what we're trying to solve. We're performing the phasor analysis because we want to relate this line current here with actually this phase current and this phase current. So we're doing a nodal analysis on node A1. And what we're actually trying to solve with our phasor diagram is this particular equation, all right? We're gonna try to find out what this line current equals when we subtract our phase current A minus phase current C. Let's draw a phasor diagram. All right, so this is what our phasor diagram looks like. This line right here at the zero degrees mark this is our reference line, okay? And this phasor that's going through our reference line, which is at zero degrees, this is phase A current. And what we're saying is that from this origin point here to this point here is a thousand amps. And the angle is at zero degrees, which is the same direction as our reference line. This phasor here, this is our phase B current. And from this origin here to this mark here is a thousand amps. And the angle, which is 240 degrees of what we defined, that angle is from this reference line going in a counterclockwise direction until we've gone 240 degrees. So this angle is 240 degrees. So we are defining this phase B current here at the angle of 240 degrees. Okay. And lastly, this phaser here is our phase C current. Again, it's again from the origin to the end of the tip here is a thousand amps in the angle from the reference line going counterclockwise 120 degrees to get to this phaser. So phase C current, which is this current here, equals 1000 amps at 120 degrees, all right? So let's uh, mark these angles here. So we're saying that this angle right here is 120 degrees, and we're saying that this angle here is 240 degrees, okay? And now let's clean this up a little bit. Okay, so we're going to take these phasers and subtract phase A current with phase C current and then look at what our line current A looks like. 